It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. A bipartisan resolution to stop U.S. support for Saudi Arabia's war in Yemen, introduced by Bernie Sanders, Democrat Senator Chris Murphy, and Republican Senator Mike Lee a few weeks ago, was taking effect on the Hill. It was also supported by anti-war advocates all over the country and even supported by actor Mark Ruffalo in a recorded video. Nowhere else on earth today is there a catastrophe so profound, harming so many lives, that is so easy to resolve. Please call 1-833-STOP-WAR to urge your senator to vote for the Sanders-Lee resolution to end the unauthorized U.S. war in Yemen. We can stop the bombing and let food and medicine into Yemen so that millions may live. But now the Sanders-Lee resolution is in jeopardy. Opponents are actively mobilizing against it. First, an alternative resolution has been submitted which would require the State Department to certify whether Saudi Arabia is making efforts to end the war and to alleviate the humanitarian crisis as a condition for continued U.S. support. The second initiative is to derail the Sanders resolution and that comes from the Pentagon where the Defense, Defense Secretary James Mathis claims that the loss of life would be greater in Yemen if the U.S. withdraws its support for Saudi Arabia. Joining me now to discuss all of this is Mark Weisbrot. Mark is co-director of the Center for Economic Policy and Research and is the author of Failed, What Experts Got Wrong About the Global Economy. Mark, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for inviting me, Sharmini. Mark, let's start with the new resolution that uh, has been introduced by Senator Young and Sheehan and what it is proposing to do and the problems you are having with it. Yes, well, this is kind of a trick that they're using. They're going to uh, basically get the Secretary of State to make a, a certification with regard uh, to the bombing and the human rights situation there. And this is something that has been done for decades. This was done in the 1980s, for example, when the U.S. government was funding the Salvadoran military and death squads there, uh, and they were killing thousands of people. And so there was a mass movement against it, and they passed a law saying that the president, who was President Reagan at the time, had to make these kinds of certifications every six months. And of course, he just did it. And this is the kind of thing that you would get here. So what it, it's really important because, you know, even though it seems like a, a detail uh, that most people won't notice, this is the way that they get away with murder. This is the way that they will, what they're trying to do is provide cover for just a handful of senators so they can vote for this instead of the Sanders-Lee bill, which would actually stop the war. And that's very important to understand. That could actually stop the war. It would stop U.S. involvement in the war, which could stop the war altogether. Mark, the, Mark, the, the Yemen resolution, as Senator Young and Sheehan have introduced, wouldn't it force Saudi Arabia into negotiations and alleviate the humanitarian crisis in Yemen? No, because again, you would just get this uh, certification from the State Department, and then they would just uh, then they would just go on and the war would go on and the blockade would go on. This is why people are, are dying in, in Yemen. This is why more than 8 million people are on the brink of starvation. It's because of the war itself. It's because of the blockade. They're not letting in food and fuel and medicine. And so, and, and of course, they're destroying infrastructure as well. And the fuel is needed to pump water so people don't have clean water. And you have a cholera epidemic, it, it, which has sickened a, a million people and killed thousands of people. And this is why the, you know, the UN agencies have all called for an end to the hostilities. And they've all said that this is the worst humanitarian crisis in the world. And the only way you're going to stop it 
is to stop the war. And that's why Sanders and Lee and Murphy and a number of other Democratic senators who co-sponsored this uh, are calling for, they're using the War Powers Resolution of 1973 to actually force a debate and vote on the war itself, on U.S. military participation in that war. Mark, as I said off the top, uh, James Mattis, in charge of the Pentagon, uh, says that new restrictions on this limited U.S. military support could increase civilian casualties and jeopardize cooperation with our partners. What is your assessment of that statement? Well, again, all the UN agencies, all the aid agencies, everybody who is paying attention to this, who cares about human life, in, in Yemen says that it's the war, that you have to stop the war. And it's quite obvious, it's, it's, it, it couldn't be more direct. If you're blocking uh, food and fuel and medicine from coming into the country, that's what's killing people, that's what's killing civilians the most. Of course, the Saudis have also killed a lot with their bombs as well, a lot of people. I mean, uh, you know, there's more than 10,000 civilian casualties from the three years of this war. Uh, also. So that's the other part of it. And here's where the U.S. Uh, plays a crucial role in the whole thing. They're actually refueling, U.S. military is refueling these planes in midair, and they're providing targeting and intelligence assistance. Without this assistance, both the refueling and the targeting assistance, uh, the Saudis would have a very hard time even carrying out this war. So it's essential, It's and it's included. This kind of assistance is military involvement under the War Powers Resolution, which was passed in 1973 to reinforce our constitutional, uh, the constitutional authority of Congress. That is Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution that says only the Congress uh, can declare war and only the Congress can authorize a war and this war is unauthorized. In fact, the Congress already, uh, the House of Representatives already voted last year uh, by uh, 330 to 60 votes uh, that this war is unauthorized and that the U.S. military is refueling these planes and providing this assistance. So it's it's completely illegal. And now uh, the Senate can really take it to the next stage of putting an end to the war by passing this vote. Mark, earlier this week on Tuesday, Senator Elizabeth Warren questioned the head of U.S. Central Command, which oversees U.S. forces in the Middle East and Central Asia, about exactly what effect U.S. support for Saudi Arabia's war in Yemen is having on the civilians there. And General Botel said that the military, the U.S. military, does not know. And what did you think of that answer? Well, the amazing thing is, you know, she asked him what happens. Do you know what happens? Where are these planes going that you're refueling in, in midair? Where, where are they going? Where are they bombing? And he said, we don't know. And so, uh, I mean, first of all, it's, it's kind of outrageous that they don't even care. If it's true, they don't know. Uh, and what's being done, because they are bombed, that's well documented that they're killing civilians, they're bombing civilians, they bombed hospitals. And, you know, and, and, and it also debunks the argument that these people are making that the U.S. military is having some kind of influence uh, there, which is, of course, another uh, bogus argument. So uh, that shows that they really, they, even the military, which is really, wants to continue and and they want they don't want the precedent either they don't want the congress uh you know saying that they have to get out of this war even though that's the congress's job uh and even they can't uh, they can't even defend their own actions at the at the most uh, basic and superficial level right um, and how could it be that the general in charge doesn't know the effects their actions are having um, in Yemen? Well, it could be he's not telling the truth, or it could be they're just refueling the planes and they're, the Saudis go and bomb and they don't really even pay attention to where they're, they're bombing. Either way, it's, uh, it's disgraceful. And again, it's illegal and it's unauthorized. And I think what 
uh, Mark Ruffalo said at the beginning is very true uh, about this, you know, not only what a horrible humanitarian disaster it is, but it's, it's one that's probably the easiest to stop in the world because it's a human made uh, disaster that's caused by a war that uh, really needs the U.S. government's participation. All right. So where is the status of the Sanders uh, resolution? And uh, do you think it still has life uh, on the Hill? Well, it, it not only has life, there's going to be a vote. And I think, you know, the media has not covered this. This is a real uh, problem. They've covered it very little. And uh, the uh, I think part of that is because maybe some of them don't realize that the the vote is going to happen. It actually has to happen under the war powers resolution. That's why that was passed in the 70s, you know, in the wake of the Vietnam War, because it says they can't, uh, they can't, you know, the majority leader, the majority party in the Senate, uh, McConnell cannot prevent a, a vote on this. They actually have to have a debate and vote. So it's going to happen. It's probably going to happen early next week. And there's a very good chance that it will pass because, uh, you know, the last uh, vote on arms sales to Saudi Arabia, which is, you know, not very defensible, but less defensible than the U.S. military uh, participation and certainly less uh or I say more defensible than the, this military participation and certainly not as illegal, uh, that only passed by 5347. And that's why this um, young, uh, uh, young Shaheen bill is so dangerous is because if, you, if they can just get these people enough cover and pull off a few votes, uh, they could continue the war. But otherwise, there's a very good chance that it will be defeated especially if uh, people continue to mobilize, and there's an awful lot of people that are mobilizing around it. Mark, let's keep an eye on this bill, and if there's anything to report back, please join us again. Thanks, Sharmini. And thank you for joining us here on The Real News Network.